Oh, man. Hi, everyone. Nothan E. Mortano here, the Internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of this new Blink-182 album. One more time. This is the newest full-length LP from California... California? California pop-punk veterans Blink-182. Mark, Tom, and Travis are back again, this time with their 10th full-length album, following up their accurately titled 9th album, 9, in 2019, which was probably the lowest point for the band artistically. It's like they heard Fall Out Boy's Mania and thought, yeah! We can make a way worse electropop shift that will disgust our fans to their core. The upside to that now is that there is no possible way Blink is going to come through with a worse album. So whatever we're going to get on One More Time will be an improvement. And for sure it is, albeit a slight one. I mean, don't get your hopes too high. This is a, kind of a mediocre album, but pretty much all that electro crap is gone. And there are some tracks on this thing that legitimately rock. Be that Dance With Me, whose crunchy rhythm guitars and picked bass lines are sounding pretty sick, even if the Ole 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 choruses are one of the weirder song ideas here. There's also More Than You Know, which has some great riff and keyboard passages, on top of which Tom drops these anguished bars about emotional numbness and shame. There's a slightly dancey bridge on the track, too, that's a nice touch. There are a couple of short, hardcore-leaning tracks in the track list, too, that go over without a hitch. Turn This Off, as well as Fuck Face. Travis's drum performances on these tracks, and many others, are especially sharp. His speed and fill somehow feel more intense than they did a decade ago. Maybe to the point of overkill on some tracks like the Verses of Bad News, but still. It does give the record a punch, I can't deny. Overall, I would say One More Time is a return to form of sorts. It's fast, it's catchy, it's amped, it's emotional, it's anthemic, like classic Blink tends to be. However, I feel like reminding us of the past does also make it obvious how average some of the songs on this record truly are as far as writing goes. Not to mention that the band's adolescent humor doesn't hit the same in 2023 as it did in 2003, as Blink are apparently still big fans of a masturbation joke. But again, with the writing, I know this band has not been known previously to just pen flawless albums from end to end. Still, there are quite a few tracks on this thing that I feel are just merely passable as far as riffs and melodies go, be that the intro cut or Terrified. Still, there are quite a few moments on this record where it feels like the band uh, has a lot to pull from as far as topics, lyrics, inspiration. There are songs on this record about aging and getting nostalgic about the past, falling out of love as well, and the track You Don't Know What You've Got is clearly a nod to Mark's recent battle with cancer. Uh, sometimes the nostalgia on this record does get to be a bit too much, like on the closer Childhood, where we have these whiny calls of where did our childhood go? Remember when we were young? I never thought I'd end up here. Why is everyone afraid to be themselves? Lyrically, the band is just piling one cliche on top of the next here without any regard for how it ruins the writing. Plus, the mix sucks on this track with the blaring guitar and key layers. It's like a wall of glossy, airbrushed, pitch-corrected noise, which which makes me want to shift to my least favorite aspect of this record, that's the production, especially in regards to the vocals, because there's so much heavy-handed pitch correction all over these songs. And look, I know Blink is no stranger to touching up the vocals a bit, even on their classic stuff, but can it not be done in any other way? Have Tom and Mark's vocal chops gotten that bad? Because it really does take the bite out of some of these tracks. Edging, for example, uh, sounds like some Radio Disney pop punk. Meanwhile, the attempt at a big emotional acoustic cut on the title track uh, just comes across very robotic and artificial. The pitch correction, the vocal effects are laid on so thick sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between Tom and Mark's voices, because everything unique and human about their singing just gets bulldozed in the process. Furthermore, it's punk music. Even if it's pop punk music, not every note is expected to be perfect. And the raw, naked, straightforward, like average guy type vocals on classic cuts like Adam's song are a part of the emotional appeal of the tracks. If that vocal on the verses was like auto-tuned to death, it would be way less impactful. I feel like the only moment where this glossier sound actually ends up working to this record's benefit is on the song Blink Wave, where oddly the band kind of makes an attempt at doing a new wave song, and I mean, I, I suppose it's okay, it's just a you know, synth poppy anthem. But yeah, overall this record, in my opinion, it's mid. It's just okay. Overall, not terrible. Overall, not amazing either. But I suppose that does leave me at least with a bit of appreciation because uh, after nine, I know how bad things can get. And this record was at least not quite that 
bad. I'm feeling a strong five to a light six on this one. Tran, position, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head, it's another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Blink-182, uh, forever.